Hello anyone and everyone. Welcome to the June tech design update video for Seeds of Earth. In May, Seeds of Earth got some UI polish to go along with the improved game systems. Players can once again pick up, equip, unequip, and drop modules as well as see all of their ship's stats. For the June milestone, we wanted to bring the game's economy back into working order. This meant allowing the buying and selling of modules, tracking of currency, and purchasing of ship upgrades. To do this, we would need to fix up some of the old UI and completely revamp the upgrade system. For the first week of the June milestone, we focused on upgrades, module buying and selling, and reworking the HUD. Now the player can activate the vendor object by pressing the F key, can drag and drop items from their inventory to the vendor to sell them for Crip, inspect items for sale, and drag and drop items from the vendor to purchase them. Next. Players can activate the upgrades vendor to see the upgrades available for their ship chassis, as well as purchase more chassis, which unlocks more upgrade levels. Players can switch between upgrades freely on unlocked upgrade levels. Finally, the HUD was rebuilt to display the player's current shields, integrity, power, and special abilities in the upper left. Displaying this information on the reticle was an interesting experiment, but ultimately not what Seeds of Earth needed. Week 2 was back to basics, fixing the long broken death and rebuilding mechanics as well as improving some of our 3D models such as a high res sphere model, new models for NPC fighters and frigates, as well as some advanced player ships. Players can now be destroyed by enemies, select the rebuild option, and then properly be respawned into the world with correct stats and inventory. Beyond the basics however, we prototyped a new system, the dialogue system. Now we can play dialogue clips including sounds, portraits, and text. In the third week, we work to refine our module and loot design strategy. This includes deciding how stats change over the course of play and how powerful we expect each new module to be as the game progresses. Once we solidified much of this strategy, we created a ton of new modules and content for the loot system, which we'll be using in the next few milestones. Parallel to our module design efforts, we prototyped a new AI pathfinding and detection strategy that may prove to be more effective than Unreal's built-in tools. This new AI navigation is still a prototype, so it's not yet ready for alpha playtesters. We also started work on a revamped mission system, allowing us to utilize all of these new tools to tell the Seeds of Earth story and reward players. The mission system rework spilled into the last week and a half of the milestone as it proved to be a massively complex system. In the end, it allows us to utilize Unreal's level streaming and gives us a ton of flexibility for scripting events. In parallel to the mission system, this last week also introduced the action group system, which allows players to select which weapons are fired using the left mouse button or the right mouse button giving players more fine-grained control over their weapons management and power usage. With all this in place, we pushed hard to create a small demo level that brings everything together. Dialogue content with voiceovers, dynamically loaded missions, and randomly drop loot from enemies. Overwatch threat has been neutralized. Nice work staying alive out there, pilot. Keep this up and you might just be flying a dreadnought one day. The next milestone will be all about content. The loot system is ready, Overwatch. mission scripting is There's flexible, and the core of the game here. is as solid as ever. It's time to create some new enemies and start building on top of our brand new game systems. We really hope to have a new closed alpha build at the end of the July milestone, so be sure to stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check in for updates about Seeds of Earth next time.